Hey, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to using Google to make learning accessible for our bite sized PD today. Um, hope that you are all doing well and that this information will be helpful um, for you and your students. Um, so let's just go ahead and get right into this. Um, my name is Sally Williams. I am the health and PE teacher specialist in the instructional supports department. Um, nice to have you here. I am recording this session just so you know. Um, just some of our professional development norm, um, norms for our online Zoom meetings. Make sure that your microphone is um, muted and that you turn your camera on if you are comfortable. Um, so hopefully we'll have some people joining us today. Um, and when you do, please uh, follow those instructions. If you have a question or a comment, um, don't be afraid to use the chat. Um, our professional development norms um, are to be committed. Um, so being focused, um, we're going to talk a lot about how we can help students. So um, improving student outcomes will be part of this. Um, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. Most importantly, take care of your needs as needed during this. The section of the MTSS framework that we will be focusing on today is our instructional priorities, um, particularly scaffolding. Um, and so we're going to talk about how to help um, scaffold for some of our, our students. Um, um, to do some specific things to uh, help all um, learners. So um, we're going to be using Google tools to make learning more accessible for all students. And we'll get into more detail about what that means. But we're going to be incorporating technology with this so that we can scaffold our teaching to improve student learning um, and make things more accessible for all students. Um, you will know that you are successful when you are able to successfully implement Google tools into your instruction. Um, so a quick overview, these are the tools that we are going to go through and I will demo some of these during this PD. So um, hopefully this will be really helpful for you. We're gonna talk about voice typing, closed caption um, within Chrome. Um, within certain applications. And then we'll talk about Chrome captions. Um, that's like anytime you're using a video. Um, we'll talk about translate, include alt text and what that means, magic boxes, what those are. I know you're gonna be excited for that one. Color enhancer, Moat, which is a Google extension, read and write, another Google extension, read aloud, which is also a Google extension. Um, and then the visor screen dimmer. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. Um, the first tool that I want to show you is voice typing. This is really kind of a cool thing. Um, and just so you know, a lot of these I learned at the USET conference uh, that we recently went to. Um, and so some of them I have used more than others, um, but I think this is a great opportunity. I was really excited to learn some of these things and, and wish that I had known about them a lot a lot sooner. Um, so the first one is voice typing. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Um, you can type and edit by speaking in Google Docs or in Google Slides um, speaker notes. It, so it'll show up in the Google Slides speaker notes. So you click on the microphone icon to turn it on and off. And so um, in all of these, what I have done is I have set up a hyperlink here. So if you click on this, and now it's going to take us right to this um, right to this screen that's going to show us how to, how to do that. Okay. So there's each one of these tools is hyperlinked. Um, and, and, um, everything is set up the same on each, on each one of these slides. So this kind of the, the box will tell what, what the tool does. And then over here, we'll have the different steps to how to do it. Um, and so, once, um, in, order, in order to do this, you're going to turn on your microphone, which um, I believe that you can see my screen. Um, and so uh, what you will do is just go to your system preferences and then go to sound, which is right here. 
And then you can see my, my microphone is already working. Um, it's, you can see it moving there. Um, if you had AirPods or something um, or another source, then you could, you could choose just to make sure that you're choosing the right um, tool there. So you're just gonna make sure that your microphone is turned on and that it's working. And then you just go to tools and I'm going to exit out of presentation mode so that you can see this. So here's my Google Slides um, and I would go to tools right up here. And then I just click on voice type speaker notes. And so then you'll see this um, microphone show up here. And all you have to do is click on the microphone. And now anything that I say, we'll just type it into my speaker notes right here. So you just turn this on and off. It's just a toggle switch. So I could just press this to turn it off. And now you can see that everything I just said just showed up in my speaker notes. Um, so that's a pretty cool tool, I, I think anyway. Um, and you, this also works, remember this also works in Google Docs. So you can, you can use this, you can use this with your students, um, students that are having a hard time typing um, and, and need to speak um, to, to type. That's a, this is a great tool and really easy because you don't have to download anything. It's just right in tools and it works the same way in Google Docs is you just click on tools and then um, go to that voice type um, button there. Okay, so let me go back to slideshow. We might have to go in and out of the presentation mode here. Also notice that this, there's a command shift S will also turn that microphone on. Okay, so our next tool is closed caption. Um, and so you can turn on automatic captions to display speakers' words in real time in Google Slides. Um, this is available on Chrome devices. So, so anybody with a Chromebook would be able to, to, to use this. Um, Google Slides uses the computer's paired microphone. So it's, it's the same thing. You'll wanna make sure that your microphone is turned on. Um, you would open a Google Slide presentation um, and then click the present button. So we're already in, on my screen right now, we are in the presentation mode. And then I just go down here and if you can see these three little dots, they don't show up until I move my mouse over here. Once you click on those three little dots, um, you're going to click on the caption preferences. So right here, and then um, toggle captions. And you'll see there's also a command shift C that you can do this with too. So once I do that, now it's going to um, show captions down there with anything that I say. That makes me feel a little nervous when I see all the words um, showing up down there. Um, but anyway, there are uh, those are those are going to be really helpful to students, especially when you're doing a Google slide presentation. That might be really helpful. Um, and then, of course, to turn that off, you would just do the same thing. Go make sure it's in presentation mode and then click on those three little dots. Um, and then just go to caption preferences and you can just toggle that off or you can do your command shift C works the same. So let's just try that command shift C um, and you'll just see it just turns off or it turns on right there, command shift C and now it turns it off. Um, notice that in the menu there, you can also change the position. So if you want it to, to show up at the top, um, it will show up at the top, or if you want to change the, the size, I think the size that it was on right there was small, so you can make it even bigger. Um, you just click down the drop down menu and, and you can change things there. So that's kind of a fun tool. Um, another closed captions tool um, that can be used right in um, Google Chrome. And this is for like, if you're playing uh, videos or if a student is on their Chromebook and they um, are watching a video or something, maybe you don't want the sound to play and maybe you just want them to read while it, and do it quietly or maybe they forgot their, their um, headphones or something. So this is another way of doing this. So I'm going, I'm going to exit out of our presentation mode here um, so that you can see, and I need to move my Zoom window, 
Um, but you can see that there are three dots up here, and I've kind of put some screenshots in so you can see these three dots. You're just going to click on those three dots and then click on the settings button. So we'll, that will take us to settings, and then we're going to go to um, advanced. So we're going to click on this and accessibility is the is the thing that we want to look at. And then if we if we look at this live caption, that will turn on live caption. So then anytime we are watching a video or anything on, or watching a slide presentation, it would automatically show those live captions. Um, there is another way of doing this, and I haven't played with this very much, but this little button right here that you see in the screenshot, it is up here. Um, you can also turn this on by clicking on that. It's a media control button and you'll, you can see where it says live caption. You can turn that on and off right there through, through that little media button. So that's another way to do it. Um, I'm not sure if you have to have this set up first, the, um, or if you can just do it right off of there. So that might be something to play around with. The good thing about this is that once a student has these turned on, it stays with them so um, in, their, in their preferences. So when they log on to a computer, so if they log on to their Chromebook and these are the set preferences, those set preferences will stay with them. If they go into the computer lab at school and they go and log into a computer at the, another school computer or the computer lab or whatever, then once they log on, those preferences are still set for them. So, so that's kind of handy. Oh, good. We have somebody uh, at our session. Hi, Taryn. I'm just working through, we're going through these different, um, different accessibility tools um, in Google. So feel free to go back and, and take a look at, uh, we're just going through, we're on like the fourth one. So feel free to go back and take a look at the ones we've gone through so far. Um, so the next, um, and the, the ones that we have talked about, I'll just go back just for your sake since you're here. There's, we talked about voice typing. This one's pretty, pretty simple. It doesn't require a Google extension. Um, and then we talked about two different closed caption options. One of them is just in Google Chrome and the other one is right in Google Docs. So it's just in this tools, um, uh, menu up here on Google Docs and in um, Google Slides. Taryn, you can see my, my desktop okay, right? Yeah. Perfect. So feel free to just ask questions as we go along here. Um, all right, so the next one, I wish that I knew about this a lot sooner because this would have come in so handy um, when I was teaching. Um, this is translate doc. And so basically this is going to translate a whole document um, or you can translate part, part of documents, but I'm just going to click on, I have an example here. So this is an example um, that I'll just pull up. So here's a here's um, an old assignment of mine, um, and then we're going to just go in and again we just go right to tools and translate document. I don't know if you've ever seen this or used this before, but there is all kinds of languages here that we can choose from. Um, so that's kind of cool. I've had students from all over, um, and. So it's pretty cool that there's so many to choose from. I'm gonna choose Spanish and just translate. And it's going to make a copy of this. So this is a Google doc. This has to be done um, in, in Google. Um, and it's always best to make sure that you're using your Chrome browser instead of Safari whenever you're using these tools. Um, so now you can see this has translated my whole assignment into Spanish. I know that um, not all of this is going to be like translated 100% accurately, but it's going to give the big ideas there. Um, and um, we, we know how Google Translate works, right? So sometimes it's not always 
100%. But in a pinch, I think it, it helps. The nice thing that I like about this too is we still have this in English and in Spanish. And so that can also help with building vocabulary to go back and forth and look at both versions um, to help those students that, that need that. So um, that's a pretty cool, pretty cool tool there. Um, any questions about that one? Nope. All right. Have you ever used that before? No. Yeah. Um, I did put in here that use this only in a pinch. I mean, if you can have somebody like at your school or somebody translate an assignment, it's going to be way better or maybe like big assignments, but, but, you know, um, and it probably depends on the language as to how well it's translated and the context, obviously, because um, it's a little bit tricky when we're translating things, but still way cool. I wish that I would have known about that. Um, this is another, so this tool is, is for people that are using screen readers. So this alternative text is like if somebody is using a screen reader to read whatever is on this page, um, say we have an image, we can actually tell the reader what to say about this image. So instead of it saying um, select image and then, it, and then it says image, a lot of times when a screen reader sees an image, it will just say image. We can actually tell it what to say. So the way that we do this um, is to right click on the image, we would just right click. Now I need to move this window again. Um, we and then it says alter alter text or alt, alt text. And there's also a command option Y uh, available. If you click on that, you can title the image and then you can provide a small description. So I've gone in and done this ahead of time. I can say it's a white puppy, small white puppy sitting on the grass. And so then when the screen reader reads it, it will read um, the description of that image. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, in our, when, when I, I'm, so the things that I'm sharing with you were, were something that I learned at the, the technology conference, at the USET conference. Um, when they shared this with us, they said that there were some images that already have, that they may already have, um, words there to describe them so you can always just right click on that and see what is already there when i i just pulled an image off of the internet and put it in there it didn't have any kind of a description there but some in, images might so um you may want to check um okay so the next thing um is magic boxes and and these are there's nothing super magic about these other than um they suggested at this training that we use this button right here anytime that you want to add a new slide. Um, and so I've circled it in red here, but um, to use this to add slides because these are all are all specially like formatted for screen readers. So if we're using these to add slides, those boxes are are going to be read by a screen reader, where if we are just um, adding, like inserting a text box. It may, depending on the screen reader, it may not read all of the all of the text inside of that box. And so, um, trying to use those or to duplicate slides is another way. It does duplicate the formatting on those as well. So, just another thing to think about. Um, let's see, I skipped there. Let me go back into my presentation mode. Um, okay, so that's magic boxes. Um, another feature that, that is handy for people that have visual impairments is this color enhancer feature. Um, this is also a Google Chrome extension and you can go in and um, do a custom color filter. Um, and it, you actually, you choose which, which colors, you know, are going to filter best for you. Um, and so that's another way to um, just provide some, some 
uh, accommodations for people that are partially colorblind. I remember I had a student once that I never could use our red dry erase marker because they couldn't see it very well. So um, pretty cool things in here. Um, and again, this would be something that they could, you could do this on, on your, if you're presenting um, in a slide presentation, or they could just do this as a, um, something on their screen, on their computer. Um, another uh, tool that is, a, is another Chrome extension is the visor screen dimmer. Um, and these are all hyperlinked here. Um, and so you can click on that and it will give you the, the link to download this extension. Um, this is an overlay, uh, it, visors overlays and point of focus features may be assistive to users with visual perception, perceptual difficulties such as dyslexia. So you can see that they can change the contrast of, of web pages to, or people that have visual problems or um, cause excessive like visual strain and visual impairment. Um, they say that this can also help with um, fluency, um, eye strain, concentration, comprehension, and reading. And so it's just a way to adjust some things and put a filter um, to help with some of those problems. Okay, our next tool, um, and this is one that I think is really cool. Um, this is called Moat. It is also a Google extension. So this is something that you would have to um, go in and download, um, but it easily records voice notes and comments. So you can use this with anything Google. Um, it also has the ability to translate. So that's kind of cool. And the thing that I really like about this is the person that, that sees this, this is the moat icon here. Um, you do not need Moat installed on your computer to listen to the, the audio message. So, you know, like on Canvas, how we have the ability to go and, and make a verbal comment um, if you're in the, the speed grader on Canvas, if you've ever done that. Um, this allows you to do it within right inside of Google. You can even add these to your Google presentations if you wanted to add some type of little audio something, whether it's your voice or whatever audio, you can, you can add these. So basically um, what you'll do is download the extension and I'll show you what this looks like. We'll just do a little demo. So I'm gonna go out of presentation mode again. And um, I have it here um, and also up here. If you don't see, sometimes when you download a Google extension, a Chrome extension, sorry, a Chrome extension, if you click on this puzzle piece, um, if you're not seeing it up here, you wanna make sure that it's pinned. So like I've pinned some of these things that we're going to talk about, Moat and Read Aloud, and then that will, that will make them available for you to use. But that's where those are hidden, just in case you download it and wonder where it is. Um, so when you use Moat, you're, you would just click on this button and you can just click here to record a, a note. Um, I'm not gonna record one now because sometimes it takes a minute for it to render and become available in a file. But basically, I mean, I could record just something like this and it would just record. Um, and then I can pause and then I just click on this little thing to complete it. Um, and then it will save it into a file. Um, and then when I want to upload it here, I can just insert and I go over here to audio and you can see that it's right here. Um, I sometimes just go to recent and then you could click on this and say select and then it will, it's going to, to add it. You'll see it added right there. I'm gonna delete it because I've already added it. Um, so here is, this is what it would look like. And I will just play this. I can't remember what it says, but I'm going to show you how to use this Moat extension to add voice notes and comments to your Google Slides or your Google Docs or anything you wanna use it for. You can make comments here and say, Oh, hey, Johnny, good job on this. Okay, so that's basically what mode is. Um, and it's really, it's really easy to use. Um, and so that's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, and like I said, you can use it on anything Google. Um, so 
So that's a pretty that's a pretty fun one to use. And I'm pretty sure that it's free. Um, if you it, the the paid version just allows you, I think, to have a longer message. Like if you wanted it to be more than three minutes or something, um, then you can you can pay for more time. Um, so that is moat. The next one is read and write. Um, and so this is one that we that that they presented to us. Um, and I actually think after talking with some of the um, experts in my office, there's actually some better things out there. Um, this one is just a little bit more robust, I, I believe. There's So if you look at my screen, this is what the toolbar looks like. And I screenshotted it down here for you as well. Um, and, and it just toggles like this. So this is the read and write extension. And you can see it there. And then when you want to use it, you just click on that. And it has, um, you can press play. Google accessibility tools. And you can hear it. It's just reading um, this slide. So I could click on this box. Google accessibility tools. Text to speech to hear words, passages, or And you can see it's nice because it highlights it color right within with Google Drive, um, file the types, slide. Docs. So um, that's it's kind of nice. It is free for teachers. There's a premium version that's free for educators, but it's not free for students. So students, um, that's that's kind of the problem with that. Other than that, I think it it seems like a great tool. Um, the tool that that as I talk to other people that they like a little bit better is this read aloud tool. And I think um, by the way, going back to read and write, there's some other. Um, it, that's why I say it's more robust. There's some other things that you can do if you wanted to play around with that a little bit more and look into it a little bit more. I, again, I have it all hyperlinked here. So if you wanted to, to look into it a little further. Um, so there are some cool things that you could do um, with read and write. Um, this one is just mainly just read aloud. So this is a great screen reader. I know that this one is used quite a bit. Um, in, in talking with the other specialists, uh, a lot of people use this one. And again, it is, uh, it is a Google um, extension, a Chrome extension. Um, so you'll see it up here on my screen. And this one is an open uh, format uh, extension. So it's free for everybody. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have any like premium features or anything like that. Um, but that's that's nice because students can just go ahead and use Google this. Google accessibility tools. So that's what this is what it looks like. Read aloud. Click here. Read aloud text to speech technology to convert web page text to audio. Work. And so um, there's some different things you can change the the size here. You can scroll down and see um, what's upcoming. But it opens that kind of in its own window instead of it being right on the Google slide. So it's a little bit different that way. Um, but again, it's a great, another great tool that, that just gives um, help, helps our students. Um, this is also a tool that um, does translate, has some translation um, available um, in it as well. So um, those are the main accessibility tools. Um, your challenge, um, is to just go into one of your slide presentations or a Google Doc that you have, play around with some of those tools. Um, I think it takes like doing it yourself, um, but all of the tools are there. All of the hyperlinks are there. Um, these, I think, are just really simple ones. I wanted to keep the ones that were the most simple because I know how busy teachers are and, and it's like one more thing, but these are just really simple, easy, easy ones that are really easy to use um, and not hard to, to just quickly upload the, the extension and you're on your way. There's not a ton to it. So um, play around with it um, and think about, you know, creative ways to be able to use that in your classroom. Um, see what's going to help your students the most. Um, and then the challenge is to share what you learned with a coworker, either in an IPLC or um, just with somebody that you're teaching with. So hopefully that has given you some ideas. Um, and yeah, that will that will help you. There's um, our bite-sized 
PD page and links here um, for um, and, and relicense your credit things that you need. So feel free to, to uh, check those out. Um, Taryn, do you have any other questions before we wrap up? Nope. Okay, great. Hey, thank you for joining today. It's always, it's always <laughs> exciting when we have people join. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, you have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine out there. And we will, um, and, and also before I end, if there's any questions, if anybody watches this at a later time, um, my, my email address is sally.williams at canyonsdistrict.org. Feel free to reach out and email me if there's any questions you have. And if I can't answer them, I'll find somebody who can. So thank you very much for joining us. See you later. Bye, Taryn.